Hey everybody, it's Nate and Steph from Explorers.life. We teach people how to build DIY campers, and this video is episode number 12 in a series of videos where we are showing you how we're upfitting our new Ford Transit cargo van into a DIY camper van. We just wrapped up a four-part series on installing lizard skin sound control and ceramic insulation, and now it's time to install our windows. Before we actually get started with the install, we want to give a huge shout out to Turn Overland for sponsoring this video. We really fell in love with these windows back in 2018 when Nate's mom bought a truck camper that had this type of window installed from the factory. We really love the built-in blinds and screens, the dual panes for extra insulation, the way they lock into an awning position, and the fact that they are acrylic, which is 60% lighter than glass. Turn Overland liked what we are doing for education within the DIY camper building community. So they are not only sponsoring this video, but they are also giving all of you 10% off of your purchase if you wanted to use this same type of window in your van. So just head to turnoverland.com slash explorerslife, put in your contact info into this form, insert your desired window sizes and wall thicknesses, and put the code explorerslife10 in the discount code section hit send and they will send you an invoice to finalize your purchase. Now, if you need different sizes of windows or to check prices, uh, you can go to turnoverland.com slash products to see that info. And I've put all of this information and more in the video description below, so check that out. Here's a list of most of the tools that we use for this project. A jigsaw with fine tooth blade, some Permatex anti-seize, some VHB tape or polyurethane adhesive, a box knife, a pencil and Sharpie, deburring tool and file, hearing protection, eye protection, and gloves, a Phillips head screwdriver, masking tape, some Rust-Oleum paint, a straight edge and all your measuring tools, some plastic sheathing, a ton of clamps, and your windows and spacers. So we just got our shipment of windows in. This is box one of three. So we're gonna start unboxing it. Hardware kit and the window. So we got the window out of the box. Put this little piece of cardboard underneath the window uh, so it doesn't scratch up the outside of the window. It does have some protected plastic on it, so shouldn't be too big of an issue there. But there are three parts to this window. There is the outer sash that has the blinds in it, and then there's a outer and inner frame to it. The outer and inner frame are screwed together for shipping, but for installation, we need them to not be screwed together. Uh, so we are going to unscrew all of these uh, if you're missing any of these screws, be sure to check inside of the shipping box because there's a chance they could have fallen out in there. And we're just going to take these screws and put them in a bag for safekeeping for later. So now that we have our inner frame for the window, we need to make the template so we can cut the hole in the side of the van. Now to do that, we're going to basically transcribe the frame size onto the cardboard here. Uh, we're going to use the box that the window came in, but super, super important to inspect for damage and report to sender within 14 days, because if there's something wrong with the window and you've just cut a big hole in the box, ultimately uh, you can't use the box to send it back. Pretty well taped. So when we're tracing this, we have this outer actual perimeter of the frame here, and we're not tracing that. We're tracing this inner flange right here. Now I found it pretty easy to use a, a mechanical pencil like that to just get in there nice and tight against that inner flange to get as accurate as possible. So we're going to cut out along this line. Stephanie's gonna do that because this is a detail-oriented project. It's kind of her strong suit. It's pretty important to cut on the inside of the line that we just drew because then we can drop this into our template and we can double check. And if it doesn't quite fit in there, then we can trim out as necessary. It's always easier to take away material than it is to add material. So Steph's going to get started on cutting. 
Hey, Future Nate here. Whenever we did to Windows 2 and 3 on this side of the van, we actually used these SatSang window spacers, which we'll talk about later in this video, as templates for drawing on the side of the van. And it worked pretty good, so consider that. So before we do any cutting or drilling on the, uh, the side of the van where the window is going to be, I'm gonna go ahead and put a whole bunch of tape on the side of the van, as well as like some trash bag, just plastic right down below. So we don't get any kind of hot metal from cutting the van onto this so we can prevent any kind of rusting. So we have taped off the outside and moved into the inside of the van and we're going to start figuring out exactly where we need the window. So turn overland instructions. The cut hole needs to be an inch and a half from the top support structures, inch and a half from the bottom support structures and three inches from the front and rear support structures. There's a few other critical measurements that don't really apply to our particular thing right here, but read through that if you're trying to mirror this. But the inch and a half at the bottom doesn't really matter because we are going to be putting this up as high as we possibly can. So we are going to be riding right up along that inch and a half. Steph and I are going to put a mark at an inch and five eighths from the top. And then we're going to take this ruler here that we're using as a straight edge and then draw our line. Now we're doing an inch and five eighths as opposed to an inch and a half because the side of this pencil and the lead is an, in, is, is an eighth of an inch apart. And so by the time I hold this up here at an inch and five eighths and slide the pencil across the top of the straight edge, it's gonna be exactly an inch and a half. So that's the plan as of now, we're going to do that and come right back. So I'm going to take my ruler and we're going to draw a line across the top of the support ribs here. And then measure straight down an inch and five eighths and put another mark. And so now we're going to take this pencil and hold it flat on the top of this ruler that we're using as a straight edge. So now that we have our line drawn a inch and a half from this support rib, we're going to take a measurement all the way across so we can find the center point of this entire panel. The next step we're going to do is we are going to start making holes in the side of this van uh, and we're going to drill us, or I'm going to use a screw to go all the way through the body panel right here. And then another screw to go through right about here, right here all on this line. So this is going to be the top of our cut line here. And then we're just going to take the template that Stephanie cut out earlier. Uh, we did put a mark at the center of the template. And so that's just going to hang right on the center screw up top and hang from the other two screws off to the side. And so this is nice and flush with the body panel on the inside of the van. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put a few pieces of tape on the cardboard template to keep it from sliding around and then we're going to trace the outline. I'm going to be cutting just on the outside of this line and maybe even just a 16th of an inch uh, outside of the line. That way it's not so tight that we can't get the window in because you know I was drawing on the inside of the template, um, but it's not gonna be so big that it's gonna cause us issues and being too sloppy of a fit. So actual last step before we uh, get cutting because I just thought of it. Uh, I'm gonna put these pieces of duct tape up here as well, just like, so, so that we have a, um, a way to kind of grab this piece of metal as it falls out. I don't think I've seen anybody do this yet, but I just thought of it. So we're gonna try it, see if it works. We just needed a little bit more space right here, so we're just gonna go over it with the metal file. So making the hole a little bit bigger with the metal file does indeed work, but it does take a long time. So it may be worth using the jigsaw again for a second pass if the hole needs to be quite a bit bigger. So now that we have the hole cut for the window and everything is fitting nice and neat, uh, we need to actually trim away a little bit of all of these support ribs, probably about an inch and a half or so, because 
The turnoverland windows, they're not designed to go right on the sheet metal alone without any kind of extra support. So we need to have a little bit of extra substance here. And so we could have either made a spacer out of hardwood, like one inch hardwood, or some like one inch square tubing. But Satsang makes a prefab uh, ring that fits really nicely over that so that the windows have a little bit more to grab onto. And so this is how we got it from them. So it's already cut to fit the windows exactly. So this is the inner trim ring and I'm gonna get these trimmed away to fit this. Hey, Future Nate here with another tip. On this side, we cut the hole first and then we cut the supports away. On this side, we cut the supports away first and then we cut the hole. And I actually think that ended up being easier because we weren't having to cut the body panel as well as the supports at the same time. So it was pretty easy. So consider that. So now that our hole is cut to size, um, we're going to knock off any of the sharp parts of the metal that are still around. So I'm going to use a deburring tool. It's just a little blade that's made to cut off little sharp pieces of metal, as well as this metal file that we used to actually enlarge the hole just a little bit earlier. And then after we get done with that, I'm going to use just Rust-Oleum paint to make sure to seal any of the edges so that they don't rust. So while the paint is drying, let's talk about the different screws that come with the turnoverland windows. So in the hardware pack, we've got uh, the short screws, short 14 millimeter screws, and the screws that we took out of the windows when we pulled them out of the box are longer 20 millimeter screws. Now, the screws that you use are going to be based on the thickness of the wall that you're installing the windows into. And since we can't install these windows into basically just a sheet metal frame, we have to use a spacer. Now, this spacer from Satsang is 30, uh, 36 millimeters, plus a little bit for the actual like metal uh, body of the van. Uh, it comes out to about 40 millimeters. So take your own measurements if you're trying to mirror this project, but that's where ours ended up. And once you find that number, you can look on page three of the instructions and find out 40 millimeters is requiring the longer 20 millimeter screw. So we are going to be using the longer 20 millimeter screws that we pulled out of this from the shipping box whenever we go to install this in just a second. Now for the next step, we need to fasten this to the van. So we are just going to use VHB tape on the trim ring and then clamp the trim ring into place on the van. Future Nate here with the last tip of the video. So on Windows 2 and 3, we actually used a Turn Overland approved polyurethane adhesive from the instruction manual to secure the spacer to the wall. Now, it worked better than the VHB tape, but it was way messier. So consider all of that. Now that we have the tape on the back side of this trim ring, we're going to move it up into place here. Try to line it up the best we can. And then put some clamps on it to pull the metal to the trim ring. And once the spacer was nice and secure, we removed the clamps and removed the tape. So Stephanie has got the window put into the van from the outside, and now we need to put in the inner frame ring of the window from the inside. So these two little hooks on the top, uh, these need to be on the up side of the frame uh, because this is where the like the window sash and the, uh, the blinds actually attach to, which we'll show that here in a little bit. But we just go around the outside of this frame ring with our long screws. Uh, with a screwdriver, not a power drill, and get them started. Uh, we need to do this in a cross pattern. So we're gonna do these two first, and this one, and this one, and this one, this one, this one. So you're just working your way kind of diagonally across the frame, similar to how you would tighten lug nuts on a wheel. Before you put any of the screws into the holes, uh, we're going to put this anti-seize onto the uh, screw threads before they actually go in the holes, so they won't rust up and get stuck. So sometimes the measurement of the trim ring and the wall is on a borderline between the short and long screws. So you can always start with one or the other, try the short ones and see if they'll grab a hold. Uh, or if you do the long ones and you start screwing it in there, 
um, and you feel any kind of resistance, stop. You know, you don't want to go too deep. You don't want to bottom these screws out. We're just looking for uh, 50 to 75% compression, which is something that we'll show in just a second. So I'm going to keep making my way around here, and put these screws in. So in order for this to be fully installed and waterproof, the gasket needs to be 50 to 75% compressed from where it was when we just placed the window into the hole. So we just take a measurement with a ruler before we ever start tightening anything down. We tighten everything down and we take a measurement again to check to see that the gasket has been compressed to 50 to 75% of the original measurement. So now that the window is all installed, uh, let me show you how it works. So we can undo all of these latches around the side of the window. And then it opens to the first position or the second position. Or we can close it most of the way and latch it in this position here. Or we can just close it entirely. So this is the sash with the uh, blinds inside of it. And this little ridge right here mounts on top of this hook and this hook. So I'm just going to set that right on top and line everything up. So now that the sash is mounted to the actual window, uh, we have our two blinds right here. So we have our standard blind uh, for pretty much blackout curtains right there, as well as the bug screen at the bottom. So these two just kind of latch together, which I'm going to do right now because we would want to fasten the sash to the uh, spacer right here. So we're just going to snap this up and out of the way. Same thing on the bottom. And there are four screw holes right here. One, two, three, and four. And we would simply just be using the screws that came with the hardware kit to put these screws into those four holes to mount this to the spacer right here. But we are not going to do that right now because this is actually going to get mounted to the front of the wall once we get to that part of the build. We have these window jams right here that are going to mount to the spacer. And then this is going to close the distance between the spacer and the wall. These are also from Satsang, all part of the same, uh, the same kit that I mentioned earlier. But we are going to take this off, get it out of the way so we can continue on with the other two windows and on with the rest of the build. That pretty much wraps up this project and we are so happy with how it turned out. If you want to try to tackle this project on your own camper, van, expedition rig, or whatever you've got going on, remember to grab the 10% discount code from turnoverland.com slash explorerslife. And thanks again to Turn Overland for sponsoring this video. Now that the windows are wrapped up, it's time to move on to the next video in this series, where we are going to start wiring, starting with the USB outlets. And that's coming up next, so stay tuned. Now we hope you found this video helpful and if you did, it'd be awesome if you would share it with somebody or a group who you think could use it. Leave any questions you've got or new things you learned in the comment section below. And if this video inspired you to build something, be sure to tag your projects with the Explorers Life tag on Instagram so that we can see and share your projects. Subscribe if you want to see more DIY camper building tutorials and we will see you in the next video.